This is QTV News. I am Maria Tusidibe and thanks for joining us. Coming up, $3 million compensation for bereaved Faraba families. DPPR hosts monthly press briefing. Nawek, more water, better quality for Greater Banjul area. 20 megawatts power station near completion. Brikama Road inaugurated. Community welcomes improved road surface. Class of 2019 medical students graduates. UTG's 12th batch of medical graduates. For more on this and other stories coming up, stay tuned. Following former minister and member of the defunct Armed Forces Provisional Ruling Council Junta, Yankuba Ture's refusal to testify at the TRRC on Wednesday, the Gamba government on Thursday issued a press release appealing to all citizens to remain calm, be law-abiding at all times, and respect Mr. Ture's constitutional rights to due process and fair hearing. While the Gambe government takes Mr. Ture's conduct before the truth, Reconciliation and Reparations Commission as seriously provocative, belligerent, cowardly, and regrettable, citizens are reminded that the culture of mob justice associated with the past dispensation is not consistent with the democratic values and aspirations of the Gambian people that led to a peaceful democratic change in December 2016. Therefore, Citizens are urged to always remember that the borough government respects the rights of all citizens and accused persons to a fair trial, no matter how heinous the crimes they may have committed and all accused persons are presumed innocent until proven otherwise. The committee looking into the Independent Commission report on a June 2018 incident when three people were killed following clashes with security personnel has approved the recommendation that families of the deceased should receive a combined $3 million in compensation. The Farabar Commission, which looked into the incident and presented its report to the President in September 2018, had recommended compensation of $1 million to each of the three bereaved families. This was revealed at the monthly press briefing at State House. Alucisa reports. The incident which left three people dead occurred in June 2018 when angry residents of Farabar Bantang in the West Coast region class with armed security personnel over this brutal sand mining site. In addition to the deaths, several people were injured and properties destroyed. A five-member commission headed by lawyer Emmanuel Jove was set up by President Barrow to look into the circumstances that surrounded the incident. The compensation is expected to console the families of the lost ones. The committee looking into the Faraba Banta Commission's report has accepted compensation of one million Gambian dollars to each of the three families who lost their loved ones during the unfortunate incident last year. The committee is also reviewing the cases of those whose properties were damaged and injured to determine appropriate compensation. In a different development, Ami Bojang Sisoho, the Director of Press and Public Relations at the Office of the President, who hosted the morning briefing, said the President has personally donated 1,000 bags of rice worth over $1 million to victims of the disaster in CRR and URR. It was reported that in URR alone, 600 properties were affected. Efforts are also being made to mobilize $35 million as estimated amount required to provide relief. Even when press, Madam Siso will not give reasons for the sacking of Navex MD Baba Fatajo. Fatajo was dismissed on Tuesday. A statement from the Office of the President said he has been redeployed to the Foreign Service. I cannot tell you the reason for it. All I know is that he has been relieved as MD. And that to relieve him as MD, he has to force, because that's a public service. That is not the civil service. They are two different entities in term, but there's a relationship. So in terms of procedure, first he has to be terminated from um, the public service and then be appointed again in the civil service to be able to go ahead with the procedures that are necessary for his uh, um, appointment as a diplomat. The president last year promised that the foundation stone for the construction of the Banjul Bara Bridge was to be laid January this year. However, the government has been silent on the project since then. Um, regarding the um, 
um, Aliu, the issue of Banyul Bara, yes, I didn't have any updates on that. With the issue of yesterday's CRRC um, seating, he, he is aware of it, and uh, I think he always keep to the point he has been emphasizing. Let us follow the due process of the law to be able to get to the truth, and then follow the due process of the law to ensure that whatever consequences is expected as far as the law is concerned, it can be implemented without anybody feeling that you have been abused in one way or the other. According to the DPPR, 25 senior civil servants have attended a two weeks training course in India funded by the Indian government as part of this civil service reform. She concluded that the president will travel to Nigeria on Friday to attend the 55th session of the ECOWA summit. Reporting for QTV News, I am Aliou Sise. The National Water and Electricity Company have commenced the implementation of a multi-million dollar water project. They say the project will improve the amount and the quality of the water supply in the Greater Banjul area. The authorities also revealed that an electricity project expected to generate 20 megawatts is nearing completion. Momode Lamenchai reports. There is the promise of an improvement in water quality and supply for the Greater Banjul area. The National Water and Electricity Company has been faced with the challenge of providing a constant supply of water and electricity. As a result, the company has already started the implementation of projects to address the water and electricity needs of Greater Banjul's residents. The water project will improve production and distribution capacity of Nawek. The Greater Banyu residents are promised an end to their long wait for water as a result of low water level. The Nawek authorities say that out of the 10 boreholes for this project, nine have already been drilled. Our target is to have water in, in the treatment plant here and supply to critical areas by August and August uh, 2019. The electricity company is also striving to fulfill their responsibility for power supply. Although supply for electricity is improving, demand in the Greater Banyul area remains high and is increasing. Nawek is also implementing a 20 megawatt power project to supply the Greater Banyul area. This is the biggest single unit project ever headed by Nawek, says the company's power generation manager. Uh, so far, um, the project has uh, is phased into two. Uh, phase one, because to address the water supply problem, we want to concentrate on production. At least let people have water, because we have the production and the distribution. The National Water and Electricity Company has admitted to challenges and is currently trying to improve. However, in a world in which nations are competing for cleaner energy, their commitment to green energy is not a current priority. We have an urgent situation to address. That's the availability of its power supply. If you look at the other side of the world, of course, they, are, they might be very advanced in that area, but normally they have dealt with their basis before they come to the supplementaries. The electricity project is expected to be up and running by the end of this year. Mohamed Lamin Choi, QTV News. Brikama Area Council on Thursday inaugurated a redeveloped road which had previously been an accident-prone hazard for the people of Old Yundum Village. Many accidents been attributed to the road's poor state of disrepair. The council partnered with Royal Construction Company to put an end to the long-term problems of this stretch of road. Ibrahim Balde reports. This road connects different communities within the West Coast region with drivers and others using this road for their daily activities. The complaints have been that the road condition was very bad, even during the dry season. Many people had lost their lives or been injured due to potholes and the overall poor state of the road surface. Residents claim many of these serious accidents had been as a result of drivers attempting to avoid potholes and bad patches of road. Sri Fosonko, chairman Brikama Area Council, in his closing speech, urged people to take responsibility to make Brikama Area Council a better place. It is just, I mean, a commitment to them as a VDC and a representative of the village to come and talk to us about the need. But already, the council also is in recognition and understand and know that the fact, knows the fact of the, of the condition of the road. 
definitely it it was able to be you know one can be able to uh, use it during rainy season but in the um, uh, uh, in the dry season, but uh, when when rain comes, even trucks have it and uh, find it very difficult to be able to pass through through this road. And I think we all hear from the VDC chairman, Mr. Sen, that there was a time when a lady was at a label, and uh, the, uh, the, 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 the the van or the vehicle cannot just pass the waters, and unfortunately, the lady eventually got a baby on that um, uh, ugly situation which is very sudden and very unfortunate also. Ma'am said Jalo, the CEO of the Brikamo Area Council, advised the community to make good use of the road, saying a community cannot flourish without a good road. Amadou saw the contractor from Royal Construction, the company responsible for road improvements, assured the community that the newly renovated road will last for a long time and call on the Brikamo Area Council to collaborate more to extend such projects to other communities. It is us Gambians that will develop Gambia, nothing else. Uh, I can give all my best to my people and that nothing comes out of it. Uh, but it will be difficult for somebody from a foreign country to walk into Gambia and say, I'm doing this thing for your own good. Maybe there is an element that he's hiding, but. 99% uh, of the of the of the benefits will be for him. So as Gambians, I believe this. Uh, if we volunteered to get to the society, one, we will improve the conditions of ourselves, and at the same time, the environment will be looking much attractive than it is. Ali Hussein, the VDC chairman, praised the initiative and also advised the people of Old Yundum to be more responsible in taking care of their surroundings in order to attract more development. Um, really, uh, we are most, um, great, we are most um, grateful with uh, the Bikama Area Council in the sense that um, since day one of this community, this road has been a problem. If we are blessed um, um, with, the, with, the, with, the, with, the, with the construction of the road by the council, um, uh, in short, we are very much you know, appreciative of the, of, of the council's um, support to the community. Now that the road is smooth and in a good condition, it's the job of the police to make sure drivers don't drive recklessly and for all road users to behave responsibly to prevent accidents. Ibrahim Abalde, QTV News. We now take a short commercial break. We'll be back in a moment. It is the new era in broadcasting. We showed it to you with our continuously improving content with thousands of viewers around the world. Now, how do you take advantage of our existing and constantly increasing viewership? Advertise with QTV and reach a large audience. Call us on 3244444 or email marketing at qtv.gm. Follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter or Instagram, QTV Gambia. QTV, a new era in broadcasting. It's showtime. It's fashion time. Join us in July for our exclusive and exciting Tobaski Fashion Show. Designers, sponsors, come join the exciting fashion journey with QTV's Tobaski TV Show. For more information, please call 3244444 or send us an email on marketing at qtv.gm. It's fashion time! Welcome back. 21 newly qualified doctors have graduated from the University of the Gambia School of Medicine and Allied Health Sciences. This is a 12th batch of medical graduates to have completed seven years of studies. QTV's Ajibin Tudrame tells us more. After seven years of intense study, finally the 12th batch of medical graduates from UTG have qualified as medical practitioners. Mr. Malang Dong, Director of Administration at Edward Francis Small Teaching Hospital, thank partners for their support to the UTG. I would want to thank some institutions and personalities that have contributed immensely towards the success we continue to witness in both the medical school 
and the Edward Francis Martin Hospital. These include, but not limited, to, um, to the Ministry of Health and so Ministry of Health, the Gambia Medical and Dental Council, the WHO Country Office, UNFPA, UNICEF, MRC the Gambia, all for their invaluable technical support. The government of Cuba and the Cuban medical team in the hospital, the People's Republic of China and the Chinese medical team. The newly qualified doctors we are sworn in. Dr. Mahmoudou K. Cham, registrar of UTG, who praised the graduates' diligent effort over the preceding seven years. He explained the challenges faced by the institution in striving to meet very high standards. Authorities to address issues related to living conditions in the rural areas that will make it attractive to post and retain medical doctors in such areas. Issues related to supply chain management and mentorship will contribute significantly towards professional satisfaction, self-actualization, motivation, an improvement on the quality of service provision. Honorable Dr. Ahmadou El Samate, the Minister of Health, gave words of advice to the graduates, saying they should always bear in mind as medical practitioners. The, the, the Provost of the School of Medicine and Allied Health Sciences, the, the Registrar of the Medical and Dental Council, our very distinguished senior colleagues, including Professor Cora, the Sambedus, Dr. Jones, and many others. We are proud to have you here today, but you have a big responsibility on your shoulders because you are the first person the, the patients see when they get to any health facility. What you decide to do over there could mean the life of the patient being saved, it could mean the death of that patient because if you don't translate, if you don't do what you need to do and translate the information in good time, we may lose that patient. While studying, students are away from families and friends for a long time. Faith Ayepola, a graduate, says she feels happy after rough days and sleepless nights. She explains the challenges and offers advice to other students. Into the med school was one of the most, the first challenges I had. Then in getting the admission, having to sit many professional exams, you have to study hard because you don't know where the questions are coming back. Leaving family and friends, the comfort of family and friends. I live in Bikam, but I had to spend like how many years in Banjul, the mosquitoes and everything. It was not easy. Sometimes you go on hunger strikes, so it has not been an easy journey. Parents, guardians, friends and prominent medical practitioners and well-wishers attended the occasion, which ended with graduates being presented with their certificates. Ajibintu Dwame, QTV News. Muslim High, now Muslim Senior Secondary, holds 38th graduation ceremony. A total of 228 students graduated, 17 from Madarasa and 211 from the English section. The school has graduated prominent individuals, which includes TRRC Lead Council, Esa Fall, and President Adam Abaro. Jennifer Sonko was there, and she now reports. Muslim Senior Secondary School, formerly Muslim High, has produced many individuals now playing significant roles in various sectors of the Gambian society, politics, and the economy. However, the school has a lot of ground to make up according to its recent academic reports. Since 2016, the performance of the school in the WAS has been a cause for concern for parents, students and the school's authorities. In 2018, only 10 students from the school made it true to study at the University of the Gambia. An analysis of the factors that contributed to the negative trends in WAS performance was carried out by the management and this is what they found. And the school was seriously affected by a natural disaster in August 2015, resulting in a delay in the start of 2015-16 academic year. Lots of many potential students with good aggregates to other schools, and the relocation of most of our classes to St. Mary's Lower Basic School caused a lot of contact time during the maintenance of the school in 2016-17 academic year. 
Banyul Factor. It has been observed that the location of the school is now a push factor for potential students as commuting to and from Banyul is not, is, is not only hectic, but also expensive as the school buses are not enough for all the students attending Banyul schools. Guest speaker by Sen graduated from Muslim High, as it was then called in 1990. And for him, good grades matter, but discipline and good conduct he considers to be the most important to help an individual succeed in life. A few tips to encourage you face the future with confidence and achieve success in education and at work. First and foremost, you must be organized in your ways. The first thing you need to do as you walk out that door or the gate is to set yourself clear goals and focus on achieving them. What are your goals? What are your objectives? You must start thinking about them. If you focus on your objectives, you will achieve them. Do not succumb to peer pressure. In your journey, on the way, at home, at work, you will meet people who will divert you from your goals. Do not succumb to peer pressure. Be clear in what you want and work on achieving it. The outgoing head boy, Lamin Ture, aspires to be a lawyer. According to him, leading a school as big as Muslim wasn't easy. However, he admits it has helped improve his leadership skills, which will come in handy in his future career. The graduation ceremony was coupled with the inauguration of the Dr. Ibrahim Malik Samba Memorial Multipurpose Stage, Dr. being the founding father of Muslim High School. Reporting for QTV News, I am Jenna Basonko. Before we end this bulletin of the news, let's take a quick look at our main stories. Following former minister and member of the defunct Armed Forces Provisional Ruling Council Junta, Yanko Bature's refusal to testify at the TRRC on Wednesday, the Gambia government on Thursday issued a press release appealing to all citizens to remain calm, be law-abiding at all times and respect Mr. Ture's constitutional rights to due process and fair hearing. The committee looking into the Independent Commission report on a June 2018 the committee looking into the Independent Commission report on a June 2018 incident when three people were killed following clashes with security personnel has approved the recommendation that families of the deceased should receive a combined $3 million in compensation. The Faraba Commission, which looked into the incident and presented its report to the President in September 2018, had recommended compensation of $1 million to each of the three bereaved families. This was revealed at the monthly press briefing at State House. The National Water and Electricity Company have commenced the implementation of a multi-million dollar water project. They say the project will improve the amount and the quality of the water supply in the Greater Banjul area. The authorities also revealed that an electricity project expected to generate 20 megawatts is nearing completion. That's all we have for you in this edition of the news. Join us tomorrow for more news. Thank you for watching.